Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Super Squidlet for the Nintendo Switch. Now, Super Squidlet is a retro game that emulates as closely as possible the Game Boy Color. It also sells for $9.99 on the Nintendo Switch eShop and is releasing today, July 30th. Now the question we have to ask, is this a love letter to that console? Well, today we're going to answer that question. Now, just before we get to the review, don't forget that if you do like this content, to please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, I want to take a couple of seconds to thank the developers for the review code for the game. Now, just before we talk directly about the game, I do want to take a quick minute to explain the difference between a retro inspired game and what we could call a truly retro game. Now, retro inspired games will often emulate a retro style such as pixel art. However, they will nonetheless use the power of modern consoles to bypass the limitations that those actual retro consoles had to contend with. However, on the other hand, what we're going to call a true retro game not only emulates the style of those retro consoles, but also limits itself to the technical limitations of those consoles, such as resolution and even sprite limits. And Super Squidlet is the latter of these two options, meaning that if the graphics look simple at times, it's not due to a lack of polish, but rather due to a vision to adhere to the actual technical limitations of the console the game was based on, meaning that theoretically, Super Squidlet could run on a Game Boy Color. I'm taking a minute to explain this also sort of as a warning that if you're not into the true retro genre to be careful before jumping into Super Squidlet. I however love true retro games just as much as I love retro inspired games so this game fell directly into my wheelhouse. Now jumping into the game Super Squidlet picks up right after the events of its predecessor the original Squidlet game right after you end up beating Emperor Quitquat. However through a quick exchange, Plip, your adorable Squidlet protagonist, quickly realizes that he now has to team up with Emperor Quidquat to save Squishu, your beloved home. Basically, you have to help him enact a very powerful spell, but the plot is very purposefully convoluted to make sure to put an emphasis on just how gullible Plip is and also to set up a twist ending that I won't be ruining in this review. But once again, you'll be traveling through the awesome world of Squishu that is filled with humorous and adorable characters. And although the dialogue is very simple, it is funny and very endearing. And I want to put an emphasis on this because it is a big part of the game's charm, just as the first one. Now, Plip retains the same basic ability that he had in the first game, where you can jump, and if you hit the jump button a second time, it will fire an ink shot downwards that can either damage enemies or help you extend your jump. However, this time around, you get a second ability, which is a roll ability that can be used both on the ground and in the air, and it really opens up gameplay, allowing you to manipulate enemies and even scale vertical surfaces if used in succession. In this game, you also have some underwater sections that will flip around the controls using the jump button to swim in any particular direction. And also returning from the first game are a few side-scrolling shoot-em-up sections that were just as charming as in the first game. Ultimately, the platforming sections are the star of the show, building upon everything that was set up in the first game and that made it enjoyable. However, this time adding color and some more depth to the gameplay with the added abilities. Now there is a second big addition in this game, which is certain sections of the game you'll be playing as Emperor Quitquat in a retro 3D RPG style. Now as the Emperor, you'll be equipped with four magical abilities and the ability to level up and add points to your preferred abilities. Now I will say that executing this style of gameplay with the limitations of the Game Boy Color was very ambitious by the developer. And I do have to give them props because I do think that they executed it as well as they could given those limitations. I however do have to say that even after a period of adaptation, I did finally get the hang of these sections. They still remained my least favorite part of this game. 
because the fact that the environments really couldn't have any textures did make these sections sometimes feel repetitive, and I even got lost a couple of times, causing some slight frustration. Often when I got to these sections, I saw myself trying to rush through them as quickly as possible to get back to the awesome platforming sections. So when I tried to come up with my overall review of this game, it did leave me in a sort of weird spot because I had some platforming sections that I absolutely loved mixed with some weird retro 3D RPG sections that I personally would have done without, but I couldn't nonetheless say that I actually disliked them. Now, if you're a fan of retro gaming, I do overall think that you get quite a nice little package in Super Squidlet that overall is a love letter to the Game Boy Color. And as I said earlier, I do want to give the developer props for trying that retro 3D RPG style because it was a blast from the past that brought up some serious nostalgia for me. But my biggest fear is that if you did not grow up with those odd 3D retro RPGs and you don't have the nostalgia for those sections, they might actually throw you off the whole game and you might not actually appreciate them for what they actually are. So now let's actually get to the verdict on this game. Now, if you want to see the full scale I use, it's in the description of the video. Now I will be giving Super Squidlet an eight, making it a great game. However, as I said earlier, this eight does come with a slight warning. Make sure you are into the true retro experience before picking up this game. And I do have to say that the platforming and overall charm of this game could have actually had its scoring even higher than an 8. However, although it was interesting, my overall experience was slightly diminished by the RPG sections, and that's why I end up settling on an 8. So now I would really love to hear from all of you. Are you going to be picking up Super Squidlet? Or if you already did pick it up, what did you think about the game? And lastly, as I said earlier, on the way out, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and hit that notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.